Well, hello, church. Pastor Philip here on this lovely Friday night, 19 July, 2024. We have been hopping here at FVC. Everybody just doing their thing. You know, uh, many hands make light work. Praise the Lord. And uh, just uh, proud to be the pastor of this church and watching everybody just do what they're doing. And and uh, we're, we're filming here from my office because the studio over in Annex is being all geared up for the kids for the can, camp meeting. And, and uh, you know, just a lot of things are being done. We're running with the vision here. And uh, this morning, when I was praying and in the Word, uh, this just really came to me in uh, the book of Malachi. And in Malachi, you know, I'm just trusting that I'm talking to tithers. Hallelujah. Because uh, we're living in a time where uh, the wicked are being revealed. You know, we just, uh, I listened to and watched the uh, Republican National Convention all four nights. And I tell you what, I've never seen a convention where God was mentioned more than uh, how it was during this event. And uh, then last night with President Trump, you know, just uh, getting up and, and, and leading like he always has. And it was just uh, great to see. But as the, as the church, you know, as, as we move forward in this uh, time we're in, uh, I want to bring out something because uh, there are going to be, it's going to be obvious who the wicked are. And the Bible says in Psalms 91, only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked. Well, how are the wicked rewarded? Corruption. Corruption. You sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. And so uh, you and I, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And over here in Malachi, and I, you know, this... Follow me in this because this is not just elementary. Uh, and, you know, in, the, in this uh, remodeled office of mine, uh, it's just a joy watching the season we're in. We're in a good place. Yeah, obstacles, right? I get it, but we're in a good place. Now, and you don't want to miss Sunday. My goodness, we're going to get camp meeting started Sunday morning. Hallelujah. But in Malachi chapter 3, the Lord says in verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you've gone, you've gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? And God answers that question by saying, will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So God says, if you'll return to me in tithes and offerings, I'll return to you. Well, all right, FEC. I'm a tither. I'm an offering giver. And I just, I don't look at the tithing records. Family does. Has to. But I just trust, you know, you're a tither, an offering giver. And maybe you're new to this church and you're just learning uh, about these things. That's, that's, that's okay. But it says... This is how you return. There's something about, uh, you know, people look for a tax return. They look for a paycheck return, a return for, I, I do this job, my return is this amount of money. And so God says, hey, you want me to return into your life? 
tithes and offerings. Now watch this. Verse 9, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now understand that our government does not put God first. That's why they're in the debt they are. Most of the church does not put God first in their finances. They don't tithe. They don't give offerings. They'll take up offerings for projects. They'll pass the bucket. But as far as a consistent believer tithing and giving offerings, it's a small amount. But it goes on to say, bring ye all the tithes. You know what this says. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Well, we know that. We, you know, we, we, we've been taught that. We, we, most of us can probably quote that, see? But this next verse is what really was resonating uh, that got me going in this direction today. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And what lit up inside of me was this fake administration. They have been devouring gas prices, groceries, cost of living, our southern border being invaded, our military being weakened, on and on and on. The list goes on. See, we, are, we have been this nation. Now, wonderful that we know what we know. In the midst of all this going on, you and I are prospering. You know, Isaac sowed in the time of famine received a hundredfold. I understand we are operating in the kingdom. But as a, as a nation, as a whole, because uh, he goes on to, to address it uh, as on the level of a nation. It says in verse 9, you are cursed with a curse for you robbed me, even this whole nation. So this nation as a whole has been under the curse. See, but there's a remnant, a tithing remnant an offering given remnant. And God says, I will rebuke the devourer. I believe something has shifted in the realm. You know, when they tried to assassinate uh, President Trump, uh, that didn't work. And something has happened in the realm of the spirit. And he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. All this stuff, all this evil agenda that has been thrown in our face is about to get rebuked by God Almighty because we're tithers, because we're offering givers, because we're standing. See, it only takes one David to kill a Goliath. Watch this. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations, all nations, all of them, Russia, China, North Korea, Mexico, Canada, Japan, India, list goes on and on and on. Africa, right? The list goes on and on. All nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be, can I say it this way? For you shall be again a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. I'm seeing this corporately. I'm seeing this for our nation. And I believe uh, when President Trump is back in the Oval Office that he's going to, he now knows Who's who? Where before he didn't. And I believe we're going to have a lot of God-fearing people in key positions, tithers, givers of offerings. And I believe uh, that uh, what we're going to witness is going to be so delights, delightful. It says, for you shall be called a delightsome land. Ain't calling us that right now. 
Then come on to that. You say, well, Pastor, when it's talking about nation, it's talking about, uh, you know, a holy nation. You're a peculiar people, chosen generation. You better back up. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And he goes on to say, Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord, yet you say, What have we spoken so much against thee? You said it's vain to serve God. What's it got us? Look what's going on in our nation. See, but us, the faith crowd, hallelujah. We've been fighting the good fight of faith. We've been prophesying victory. We've been prophesying backfire. We've been prophesying turnaround. We've been prophesying reverse. We've been prophesying revival. Times of restitution of all things. See, you have said it's vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept His ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now, watch verse 15 closely. And now we call the proud happy. We've been, we, we've been looking at, uh, at the proud and saying, well, boy, they, ain't they got it made? What good is it? No, 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 no. That's, that's what, that's what uh, uninformed Christians are saying, not you and I. We've been saying, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now watch this. And now we call them proud happy. Yea, they that, word wick, they that work wickedness are set up. They're the ones that, that get the, the positions. They that tempt God are even delivered. But he said back here in verse 11, I'm going to rebuke all that. I'm going to rebuke all that where they've been set up, where they have uh, tried to work their wickedness. They tempt God, right? We call them proud, happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God, it looks like they're delivered. And God says, I'm rebuking. Now, when God rebuked the Red Sea, It was a setup for the wicked to follow them right back in and it closed up in them. I'm telling you, we're seeing uh, the wicked fall like dominoes. You better get, you, 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 we're going to be shouting all the way the rest of this year. The priesthood is rising. The priesthood is coming on the scene like never before. The, the voice, the clean voices that uh, the, the wicked tried to stop are going to get louder and broader, going to have further doors open of utterance given to them. Mama Alberta's been telling me more people are watching our program than ever before. She, she monitors that. I don't, you know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. That's why we're having camp meeting. That's why we're coming together. Why? We're staying focused on kingdom stuff. Speaking often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Hallelujah. That's me and you. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Now watch this. Then shall you return. Remember, return unto me, I'll return unto you. Then shall you return and discern. Say it out loud. Return and discern. See, when, when your discernment is lit up, look out. You see it. I mean, Mama Albert and I watching that uh, RNC uh, this week, our eyes were open. We were seeing with spirit eyes uh, what was going on there, and it was good. It was good. 
See, oh, I know they a cuss word here and there and all that. And I get that, right? However, uh, it was good. And as Christians, we got to understand uh, that when God is is bringing things to pass, uh, he uh, he'll use people that cuss. Hello, he'll use people that haven't been enlightened much yet. See? And we can't shun that with our holier-than-thou uh, attitude. We just need to shine our light bright and uh, see and watch that God's hand is moving. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Now watch this, chapter 4. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. They're not going to be able to produce. You don't have no root and branch. You can't produce nothing. We're here. God is rebuking the devourer, the wicked ones that have been devouring what God had blessed. God has blessed this nation. And they're trying to bring the curse upon this nation to hold and maintain power. But we're tithers. We're offering givers. We have a covenant with an almighty God. And I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, things are shifting, moving, swiftly, suddenly, that we have prophesied about, that we have talked about, that we have shouted about, that we've sowed for, for all these years. For all these years. Hallelujah. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that comes shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you. Unto you. You. That fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Folks, we're about to see notable healing miracles. Like days, like you read about in the book of Acts, like you uh, heard about, you know, with the healing uh, revivals, the tent meetings of Oral Roberts and and uh, these different ones, A. A. Allen and and uh, Catherine Coleman, and the list goes on. You and I, the Son of Righteousness, shall arise with healing in His wings. Healing, Kenneth Hagin Sr. said, is the dinner bell to salvation. You, uh, you know, I was in a meeting where this woman uh, had gotten healed on a Saturday night. And she talked to her unbelieving husband to come in, to come to the church on Sunday morning. And he was a biker. And he was all tattooed up. Now, I'm not preaching against tattoos. I'm just saying this is how he was. And he sat in the back like this right here. And then at the end of the service, I said, does anybody need prayer for anything? A few people came down. A couple of miracles happened. He's like this. And then his wife pushes the stroller down with their child in it. And I don't know what's going on. And I'm si literally sitting on the altar because I've been ministering uh, three days in a row. And I'm sitting on the altar and she pushes that stroller right up to me to where I could grab the child. And I just grabbed the little child out of the stroller, right? And I'm holding that child in my hands and all of a sudden, the child starts kicking the legs. I haven't prayed. I haven't done nothing. I did not know that that child had never moved those legs. I did not know that that child had never 
never kicked, never crawled, never stood up, and certainly had never run. I didn't know that. When I saw him kicking the, kicking the legs like that, I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to cause a ruckus here. I'm going to set this child down, set the child down, took out running. Daddy got saved. Crying. Notable miracle. Dinner bell to salvation. The son of righteousness. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost in here, Pastor Eric, right now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You need healing in your body, stretch your hand out towards this camera right now, towards the television set. There's an anointing. My God, there's an anointing in here. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke pain. I rebuke infection. I rebuke disorder. I rebuke anything that is trying to hold you back. Any kind, eyes, ears, throat, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Backs, be healed. Necks, be healed. All joints, be healed. In the name of Jesus. All that irritation, that rash, be gone. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody's ankles being healed right now. Glory to God. Elbows. Hallelujah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Tremendous, tremendous pain in the head. Go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, I tell you what, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Now watch this. And you shall go forth, not backwards. You shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Calves in the stall. What's that? They are fed. They get fat. They just get, uh, I mean, they're just being well protected, well taken care of. And it says in verse 3, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet, in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. FEC members, I ain't going to keep you long tonight. I'm hungry. <laughs> and no, I ain't going another 10 minutes that I know of. I love you guys. And I want you to get ready. Get ready, get ready for the fire this Weak. See? And I want you to understand. Well, let me let me finish this out. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded you in Horeb for all Israel and the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. We're talking about the family coming together like it's supposed to be instead of a fatherless generation. Fatherhood coming in to the reality. I told Mama Alberta when I saw J.D. Vance, 39 years on this planet, had a rough upbringing. And there was President Trump. And when I saw him, I thought about Elijah and Elisha. President Trump is going to be the father to J.D. Vance that he never had. And because J.D. Vance was a Marine, he will know how to honor that. Not just as president, not just as commander-in-chief, but as a father. And President Trump took somebody that he could groom so that when his time is up, he could pass that mantle on like Elijah did to Elisha. I believe that. We'll see what happens. But if there's one thing I know, he's going to father him. And I can tell J.D. Vance is going to be 
submitted as a son to a father. Well, that's what I have for you tonight. Uh, my fish fast is over. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go get me something to eat right now. Uh, well, I have to contact Mom Alberta. You know how that goes. Praise the Lord. I love you. Let me bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless all of our people tonight. Thank you for each and every one of them. Prepare their hearts and minds for this upcoming week. Thank you for the, your healing anointing that just came through here a while ago. We thank you for all that. Thank you, Lord. Now I bless them, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, in the mighty matchless name of our soon and coming King Jesus. So be it. Amen. Well, me and Mama Alberta and Petey love you. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. You be a blessing. <laughs>